This is Mark Castillo, General Manager at G3 Boats. I'd like to invite you to come with us as we go through a new factory tour. Have you guys ever wondered how your boat was actually built? When you get it, it's already ready to fish or get out on the lake and enjoy or whatever else. So why don't I give you a good little walkthrough of how we do things here at G3 Boats? What do you say? Let's start from the beginning. Melody Rodden, a fabrication supervisor. We make all the aluminum parts that go inside the boats. Three plasmas, they cut all the parts out, dead on accurate. They go out to the shop floor, to the brake operators. The machines, they cut accurate. We have very low tolerance on the parts, all the crucial parts, uh, a lot of different dimensions in there. So in the nutshell, fabrication, we do the structure of the boat. Cody Rodden, I've been at G3 for um, right at 26 years, and I've been in the production side of Plant 2 for basically all the 26 years. Once the hulls get welded up, we put the gunnels on them. Some of the gunnels are preformed, some of them we have to bend, but that's where we get the strength from the sides at when um, the boat goes up. Most of our boats has ribs, that, uh, longitudinal ribs, that run the length of the boat, and them ribs get welded every two inches. This boat here is an 18 duck boat. These ribs run side to side, and they get welded, as you can see, that from the dive mark to the bottom, and you can see the dive mark there, on each pad is how these ribs get welded in. This is our base 17, which has got the ribs running from the front to the back. This is the one I was talking about that had the two inch weld and the two inch face, two inch weld, and then the stagger on the other side to where it's basically, if that rail's 12 feet long, it's 12 feet of weld on that one rib. Well, on our deep bees, if the, um, I know that like the rivets down low where we um, rivet the side sheets to the bottom of the hull, um, they're a half inch apart staggered. Now tell us about the rivet it's on the, here rivet. on the side of the boat. It takes two people, well, sometimes on a boat like this, you have to drive it from this side and buck it from this side. And what we're looking for here is a good head on the uh, back side of the rivets. We want to make sure that these get set good, where there's no gap, you can't get your fingernail in them, and then where there's a good head on the... So on there the are some parts that are welded in here, as you can see. Right. I mean, you, you've got you've got centerpieces and, and, and basically the structure of the boat is welded, but the outside, the bottom, all is, is riveted. Anything, yes. Yeah, and that's what I say with these boats for big water, the rivet gives it more flex in here, gives it a smoother ride, gives it more flex. Right. Correct? There you go, that's in the angler. A few years ago when we went away from the wood transom, we went to the um, aluminum transoms. That way it was part of making the boat wood free. What it done then was gave us the opportunity to be, we used to bolt all the knee braces and um, to the boat running through the back, which when we went to the aluminum transoms, it gave us the opportunity to weld them in and not have so many boats, which uh, work could leak at through the boat. So you say this is stronger? I think so, yes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. My name is Carrie Blackman. I am the lead over the paint department in Plant 1 and Plant 2. Our process is the five baselines feed into the foam area. Once they have the flotation foam installed in them, they're pushed over to our pre-sand area. And that is where we sand the tops of the boats, anything that you can see when you're standing in the boat. Our wash process is we have a metal conditioner acid rinse that we soak the boat in. 
bottom to top, left to right, 360, and then we repeat it the other way. From there, it goes around the wall into the paint room, and that's where our monorail will split. We have two lines, on, two primary lines. We have our enamel side and our urethane side. So the enamels are gonna be our air dry paints, our desert browns that get put on before they get camoed. Our guide boats get the gray enamel on the inside. Once those boats go through, they'll get backed up over to the urethane side and have the urethane midnight blue. So we do have some boats that are two and three steps before they go to the drop station. When they come out of the baking ovens, the monorail meets up again and goes out to the drop station. We'll also inspect the boats for paint runs, debris, grinder marks, anything that would reject that boat. It's a very important station. That's why our QC person tends to hang out there a lot, just to a second set of eyes. I'm Jesse Hawkins, the uh, production supervisor here at G3 Boats. Probably the best the best place to start on a pontoon is the foundation. Just like a good house, you gotta have a good foundation. And our logs are U-shaped logs. Um, we come to us in a coil and we roll them out, form them into a U-shaped log, weld them up. They're set down and then we frame up a deck. We use uh, a couple different sizes of channel, a couple different thicknesses, and that bolts the logs and that's what makes our foundation. Put a 5 8 plywood down. It's uh, sealed off, or no water can come up through the floor while your boat, while you're out in the lake in your boat. Then after that, it goes up and gets the vinyl put on it. And then from there, it really starts starting to look like a boat. Then it gets the rails put on it. Uh, that sets the outside perimeter of the boat. And then your furniture goes inside, slides out to your rail, and we'll put the console in, wire it up. Make sure everything works from there. We do a preliminary test, electrical test, once the console goes in. And then we, then it moves on up, and that's where it starts getting the trim put on and start making it really look pretty. And it, uh, put the bimini top on it, put the trim around it, uh, put the performance shields on the bottom, uh, and then it goes up for a final testing clean. We'll, we'll test the fuel system with air, make sure there's no leaks in there. We'll do a final electrical test, make sure all the all the electronics work and all the gauges work and then uh, give it a final clean and give it a shrink wrap cover it's ready to go out the door. I'm Scott Winfrey. I am lead over the finish department, fit and finish department. When the boat comes out of paint, it comes to us um, as just a regular hole, just paint it up. We put uh, ply vinyl on it um, or carpet, whichever gets chosen. And then after that, we put, we get some decals slapped on there to make it look pretty. After that, we start with the wiring. Um, they put that, get that all wired up, get your pumps running. Uh, run the hoses for your live wells so your fish stay alive. <laughs> we go to start and put all the, install the doors and boxes for your storage. After that, we start putting on the electron, electronics, the trolling motors of your choice. And it goes into the station where we clean everything thoroughly, uh, make sure everything's good and clean. We test all of the pumps, all of the, the horns, all of the the horn, the electronics, the ignition, everything that turns on it has a switch. It gets tested to make sure it properly works before it leaves the building. Then it goes to the final station and they put a trans shield boat cover over the top of it. We shrink wrap it down so everything stays good and clean and it's ready for you to climb in and go fishing after that. Well, there you have it. Our great employees taking some rolls of aluminum, some extrusions, giving them a great paint job, and voila, they produce some of the most popular boats on the market today.
Thank you for your business, and be sure to check us out at g3boats.com. See you on the water.